There is nothing more precious to me than when I am in prayer and God is teaching me, talking to me, fellowshipping with me. And it's a back and forth thing. He'll say something, I'll ask questions, and he'll answer. And he most always answers with scripture. And this morning, it was in my heart by the, by the will of God to talk about the blood of Jesus. I knew that. But when I got here to church, I heard, the Spirit of, I heard the Spirit of God, the Father, say to me, I saw it. And I, said, and I didn't understand what he was saying. But he, kept, he kept ministering to me, my eyes saw it. And I thought, all right. I got ready what I thought God wanted. And then when we started, when Terry Mai's song started sing, playing, and Doyle started praying, which that's the way it always worked, it was Terry Mai would sing and Doyle would pray. It'd be right over there. And you could hear Doyle above the singing. And I joined in with my faith, and God started talking. And he said, go look at this. So we're going to look at this. I want you to turn with me to Leviticus 17, 11. It says in verse uh, 17, 11, it says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood. This is the way the Father and the Son set it up in the very beginning. He said, For the life of the flesh, your life is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. Your souls. Not just your flesh, your souls. It says... For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Amen. The, the word of God says that sin has to be paid for. Has to be paid for. It says the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. That was from the very beginning. That was from before the earth came. And God said, I'll give you the blood for an atonement for that sin. Because you know, you take the blood out of something and it dies. Amen. It dies. It says the wages of sin is death. So when you take that blood from that animal, that being, it dies. There is your payment for the sin. Amen. Well, God said, I'll give you the blood for that. Now, turn with me to Exodus 25. I'm going to begin in verse 21. And this is God speaking to, Ab uh, speaking to Moses. They are speaking face to face, it said. The father came down. In the, in the cloudy pillar, and they would talk face to face. And it says God is giving Moses direction. He's telling him exactly how he wants the tabernacle built. And if you will read in Hebrews, he did it that way. He told Moses, I want you to build exactly the way you saw it on the mount because it's going to be a pattern of what's in heaven. Amen. There is a tabernacle in heaven, and Moses made a copy of it, a pattern of it, down here. And Moses built it, and the father told him exactly how to build it. And right here, he's telling him about the Ark of the Covenant and the mercy seat. And he says on verse 20 of uh, let's Exodus 25, he said, And make one cherub on one end and one cherub on the other end, even of the mercy seat shall you make the cherubims on the two ends thereof. And he said, And the cherubim shall stretch forth their wings on high, covering the mercy seat with their wings, and their faces shall look one to another, Toward the mercy seat shall be the faces the cherubims be. He said, this is how you're going to make it. It's going to look exactly like this. Amen. And then look what he says. Look what he says in verse 21. He said, and thou shalt put the mercy seat above upon the ark. And in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee. And he says, and there, and there, I will meet with thee. Amen. And I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat from between the two cherubims which are on the ark of the testimony of all the things which i gave thee in commandment unto the children of israel the holiest of holies that that ark and that mercy seat were not just things and it was not just things a pattern god actually met aaron from the top of that mercy seat. Amen. The Spirit of God was in there. That's why they had to do it exactly right, because if they didn't do it right, they were dead. Why? God was in the holiest of holies, and he was residing right on top of the mercy seat. Amen. I've heard things written about that, 
But God, the Spirit of God himself was on top of the mercy seat when Aaron would bring in the blood. God was there. Now, you know what? God saw Aaron come in. God was there. He saw Aaron walk in with the blood. He saw the blood poured out, sprinkled on the mercy seat. He saw it because he was there. He was there. He was not only in heaven looking down, but he was there. His presence was in the holiest of holies. Right there. Now, turn with me to Matthew 26. Matthew 26, verse 27. This is Jesus. And this is at the Last Supper. Verse 26, and says, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body. And then 27, he said, he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave it to them saying, drink you all of it. All of you, take a drink of this. Every one of you, Uh make sure you get a drink of this. He said, for this is my blood. My My blood of the New Testament. My blood. Jesus' life was in his blood. So he knew his life was going away. He said, this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many, many, for the remission of sins. You know that word remission? That word remission means forgiven, and it means to pardon as if you had never committed the sin. Not just forgiven, but as if you never committed the sin so far as it even remits the punishment, the penalty. What's the penalty for sin? Death. What does that blood do? It takes away the penalty. It not only takes away the sin, it not only forgives it, it takes it away, and it even takes away the penalty. You won't die for that sin. Thank God. You will be remitted. It will be remitted. It will be taken away, and you will stand there like you never sinned in the first place. I was going to say, how wonderful is that? Wonderful. Right. It says, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Now go with me to Hebrews 9. I'm going to begin in verse 12. It says, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, Jesus, his own blood. He shed his blood on the tree. And remember, when he was dead, the soldiers came up to him, realized he was dead already, pierced his side with a spear, and out came Jesus' blood and water, and it poured down to the bottom of that cross, just like the sacrifices did in the tabernacle. But that's not the end of it. That's not the end of it. Jesus took that blood and he went into the heavenlies with it. He went into the heavenlies with it. And just to make you understand, he went into the heavenlies with it as a man. As a man. He had the blood with him. And it says, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, a man. He entered into once the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Jesus took his own blood, went in to the tabernacle in the heavenlies, not made with hands, but made by God. He walked into the holiest of holies with his own blood, and guess who met him there? Guess who met that man with the blood in his hand? Guess who met him there? Verse 24, for Christ is not entered into the holy place made with hands, which is the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Can you imagine Jesus walking in to the holiest of holies in heaven as a man with his blood and God meets him there, meets him in the holiest of holies. And Jesus is there, not for Jesus. Jesus is there in the presence of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob for you and I. 
Jesus is there in the presence of the Father with his own blood for you and I. And he sprinkles that blood in the presence of the Father. In the presence Thank of God. the Father, he sprinkles that blood. Thank God. That's why you and I can enter into that holiest of holies boldly. Thank God. Because Jesus showed up first. Thank God. And he gave his blood for us. Thank and God. now we are welcome to enter into that holiest of holies in the presence of the Father. Because the Father met him in that tabernacle. Met him there and received the blood. And he will meet us there too when we enter in boldly with that faith of what that blood did for us. That, I can't think of a more wonderful thing than that. I can't think of them. I, I, I just thank you, Father, that you said I saw it. And you made me ask and say, show me. And he did. Amen. God met him, met Jesus in the holiest of holies. And Jesus, there is a man with his own blood that he shed for you and I. And he was there for us. Amen.